Okay, this is a repeat of a tutorial that I did for uh, FIAP and also for my local camera club uh, in Belfast here. So the image is not mine actually, it's by a friend of mine, Tony Mulvena, and it was taken on one of my studio workshops. And he has um, clearly overexposed this image, but luckily if you look at the histogram, he has not blown it out. So there's no spike on the right hand side of the histogram, so any lost detail or detail that appears to be lost can in fact be recovered. So I'm just going to bring down the exposure <clears throat> by a stop. I'm going to reduce the highlights by 30 and shadows I will bring up maybe 20 and um, we'll bring the whites down and uh, it's only whenever I get the exposure right that I go to colour temperature because it's very hard to gauge colour temperature when an image is either underexposed or overexposed. So expose it properly and then change the white balance. So I'm just going to type in 5200, which is daylight, and that's what my studio lights are supposedly set to. It doesn't mean that 5200 will always work, but it's a good starting point, and then you just do it by eye to either make it warmer or colder. So this will open it in Photoshop and this is a new technique in Photoshop. Obviously we've made a mistake in the framing here. So I want to add more canvas on the left hand side of the model. And as long as I have ticked content aware up on the top right hand corner, I can drag this out. Now I'm putting the eyes basically on the thirds just bring that in from the right hand side. So that looks to me like a nice uh, frame for it. And whenever I hit enter, it will crop and then content aware will slowly fill in this um, extra bit of canvas with um, the same background. So it's done a great job apart from repeating this little dark mark. So I'm just going to use content aware fill again to fix that. So if I use the shift backspace key, that brings, it's a shortcut to the fill menu. And as long as content aware is in there, I can just click okay. <clears throat> and I'll maybe just do that again on that bit. <clears throat> so I'm happy with that. Um, next step for me would be to do a wee bit of um, uh, blemish removal. So I'm just going to go Command J for Windows people. That would be Control J, and that gives me a um, a duplicate layer to work on. And if I mess anything up here, I can just delete this layer and start again. But it also shows me where I started and where I finished. So I'm going to the Spot Healing Brush. Now the Spot Healing Brush works best with a hard edge. So if we 100% hardness on the edge of the uh, Spot Healing Brush. And anywhere that I see a little mark or a hair, for instance, like there, I'm just going over it with the uh, spot healing brush. A little hair there, and there, and there. Any skin blemishes? I'm just using the right square bracket key. To make the uh, size of the brush slightly smaller or slightly bigger as required. So if we go back, oh, there's another little skin mark there. I'll just do that one. So looks pretty good before, after, before, after, and I'm now just going to flatten image. Now again, there is a brand new filter in Photoshop 2021, and it's under neural filters. So filter neural filters, and there it is, skin smoothing. You need to turn it on by clicking there, and blur equates to the texture in the skin. Smoothness obviously is the smoothness. So I'm gonna keep some of the texture of the skin. I'll maybe go down to about 16. Smoothness, I'll maybe go up five, and I'll just click okay on that. 
and we've got before, after, before, after. Now on the basis that less is more, I'll just go V7, and that reduces the opacity of that by 30% from 100 down to 70. Still does what it wants, what it says on the tin. I've lost a bit of contrast there on the nostril. I'll just paint that back by putting a mask on. Painting in black, B for brush. You can see over here, white is my foreground color. I can switch it to black by just hitting X on the keyboard. So B naught makes me paint at 100% opacity just to get rid of that softening filter where I want that little bit of contrast left before, after. Happy flatten image. I'm now going to use liquify to um, basically improve the appearance of the image. Command J, filter liquify. So if, if an arm is pressed against the upper body you will get this slight bulge on the bicep so it's important to uh, look out for that and just to fix it. So I'm just going to drag that in using what's called the forward warp tool which is the first tool you'll be on by default as soon as you come into liquify. Let me just push that back a little there. Get a bigger brush, move that in a fraction more. And I'll just bring that down a fraction on the shoulder. And I'll make the hair <clears throat> have a little more body to it, so I'm just going to add body to the hair up here. Yeah, I think that's all good. So when I click OK, those will changes will have effect. Command zero makes the image fit the screen. And I can go before, after, before, after. Flatten image. Now always look out for areas of skin that are too bright. Uh, the hands, for instance, can be very reflective of light, as can the chest and arms. So you don't want these to be as bright as the face, or in this case, possibly even brighter than the face. Uh, I might also bring down that highlight on the forehead as well. So Command J, and I'm going to use Curves, Image Adjustments, Curves. And there's a little hand tool in Curves. If I click on that and click on the shoulder where the bright part is, and just, um, oh, I'll just remove that, I didn't. So you just click where you want the area of brightness to be affected. Click and drag your mouse down and that automatically adjusts the curve at the point where, where you are on the curve. Now that obviously has affected the whole, the whole image. So I'm just going to black that out with a black mask. B for brush. X to paint in white again. 2 for 20% with a soft edged brush. So I'm just going in at 20% and building it up in some areas more than others. I could use flow to do this obviously, but um, I'm just doing this very quickly, just using opacity. And I'll go down to 10% uh, here on the forehead and just give it a couple of passes. Before, after, before, after. I'll maybe give the forehead a little too, little more, and then I will reduce the overall opacity of that. Um, v6 takes off 40%. No, I'll go higher, 7 for 70%. Yeah, I'll go with that. Flatten image. Um, I think I could still push this little bit in here a little, so I'm just going to go back into liquify. And I'm going to make that a bigger brush, and I'll just push that whole material in there. So 
so before, after, I think that's better. Latin image. Now, <clears throat> uh, another new technique that I've learned is to use a adjustment layer in black and white mode. And I'm just going to bring down the reds and the yellows. Until I see an adjustment to the uh, contrast. And I'm going to put that layer into soft light blending mode. So before, after. And yes, it's way too much. I'm just going to black it out by going Command I to invert that mask. I'm going to go B naught for a hundred percent opacity on this with a white brush, a soft edged, and this will look a little mad initially. Don't worry about that. Um, we are going to significantly reduce the opacity of this. So that's it at a hundred percent. If I just go V3, that's 30%. And there's just, it's like an easy man's dodging and burning effect. I'm happy with that, and I will flatten image. Now, I think the eyes could be enhanced a little. So I'm going to add a little highlights, catch lights here in the bottom of the on side of the iris. I'm going to do that just with a simple little uh, curves adjustment layer. In, I'm not going to touch the curve. I'm just going to put it into screen blending mode and then invert the mask, Command I, and then paint that in with a white brush, B3, using the left square bracket key to make my brush smaller. So it actually takes more. I'm just actually going to go not for 100% and paint this in at 100% and then reduce the opacity. That's often easier. So I'm going to blur that. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Maybe um, let's see eight pixels. Let's see what that does. Preview. So that's what pre blurring is a bit much there. I'll go four pixels. Yeah, I like that. And now I'm just going to play with the opacity V six. So look at the life that has come back into the eyes there. And I'll just maybe. Um, also dodge the catch lights in the eyes. I'm going to use the ordinary uh, dodge tool for that. So the dodge tool, I'm going to set it to work on highlights. It's at 20%. I'm probably happy with that. And I'm just going to give the catch lights a bit of a lift. That's too much. I'll just go V5 on that 50%. Latin image. Another little trick, Command J. I didn't do this on the FIAP tutorial, but you can also use the sponge tool, which is at the bottom of Burn and Dodge, and it can be set to either desaturate or saturate. Now it's at 30%, so it's quite a lot, and I'm just going to go in and enhance the color that's in the eyes. This will be too much, but again, I'm going to use opacity, the beauty of the duplicate layer. I can then use opacity. To bring it back to taste before after before after v4 maybe yeah nice and subtle we might go five on that 50 percent yeah flatten image command zero and i'm going to bring in a texture i'm just going to use a simple um, wallpaper texture uh, command A to copy, Command C, or Command A to select rather, Command C to copy, and now Shift Command V to paste it in place. Command T to transform it, and I hold the Option or Alt key and just drag it up. Uh, it's a little bright on the right hand side, I'm going to make it darker on the right hand side. I'm just going to darken this part of it. Um, 
by using one of my actions. So I'm just going to do a vignette action on that. Um, so that's just a simple darkening to action I have. Oops, um, I didn't mean to flap in the image there. Command Z, I meant to merge down. Merge down. Nope, we've got a problem. I will try merge visible. I'll turn that layer off. Merge visible. Right, that has worked. So I'm going to blur this layer of texture. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. <clears throat> Maybe 30 pixels. Too much. 24. And I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. So that's what it's going to do to our background. We don't want it over the skin or the hair, uh, or certainly too much over the hair. So we're going to mask it out. If I turn off the top layer, go to click on the bottom layer and go to select subject. And then into select and mask. And there's a new thing called Refine Hair. I'm just clicking on it and I'm just letting it do its thing. I'm clicking OK. And now I'm going to click on the top layer and click on the mask tool. Now the mask will need to be inverted. So Command I inverts the mask. And that seems almost perfect. There's just little bits of grey on the hair here. So if I go B three for a soft edged white brush I can just paint in the texture at all it will obviously warm up the hair as well because the texture is now coming in over the hair uh, because the mask was not as perfect it was pretty good I have to say for not you know interfering if you like with Photoshop just letting Photoshop get on with it um, it did an absolutely fantastic job really So anywhere that I just see it as a little grey, where the texture is meeting the hair, I'm basically now um, extending the mask by painting white. I can show you the mask in a second. So if I hold the Option or Alt key and click on the mask, you can see these areas where I've been painting over the hair. And it's really quite subtle. There's no problem there that I can see. <clears throat> I'm just going to now do a vignette on that background. So my vignette technique you will find in another tutorial on my YouTube page um, how to create an action to create a vignette. So I'm just going to press play on that and reduce the opacity maybe to 50%, maybe 40. And I'm now just going to commit to that and flap an image. <clears throat> I still think that arm could be darkened slightly so I'm going to revisit that. Same method, image adjustments, curves, click on the hand tool, click on the arm and drag down, black it out, B2 and we'll build it up with a soft edge brush. So this is a huge image, it's something like 8 9,000 pixels on the long side, so it is um, just giving me the circle, circular wheel of death here, hopefully. This will come back in a second or two. I should have resized the image because it was already, I don't know what resolution is that camera. Uh, it's the Canon, it's the brand new Canon EOS R5 and then of course I have extended the canvas as well so it's probably about um, 70 million pixels this image at the moment.
before after yet. I think that's better now. Flatten image. So I will just now go in and resize the image. Um, we'll make it 4,000 pixels on the long side. Um, the finishing technique that you'll see in a lot of my tutorials uses Nick software. So Command J, filter into Nick software and Color FX Pro. Dark and light and center. I think it's the perfect finishing touch for most images because it takes gives you control over where the viewer's eye should be drawn by using basically brightness levels. And it's really called the center of attention for me. So before, after, and that's too much. I'm just going to go V67 to take off a third. So 33% has disappeared by typing V67. Happy with that. Flatten image. And the last step for me would be to sharpen. So Command J, filter Nick software, output sharpener. And these are the settings that I invariably use. It just gives me perfect sharpening. I don't have to do anything other than have Inkjet Auto Luster 2400 by 2400, and I don't touch anything else. And if we go Command 1, we're in at 100%, and it is absolutely perfect sharpening. Flatten image. So if we take a snapshot of where we started, so our snapshot of where we are now rather and then where we were previously we have gone from that to that so i hope that is of uh, help and maybe help you see some of these new filters in photoshop but the content aware with the crop tool is brilliant and um, Likewise, the new neural filter for skin softening seems to do a very good job. So enjoy playing with that. I actually think that this could do with a, with a little vignette. So I'm going to make quite a narrow edged selection and then play my action. And 70% is too much. So I'll just go V5. And I think that is better. So there is my final image. If you have any questions, please send me a message or type it into the comments and I can hopefully deal with it.